but you'll see. Okay, so welcome everyone to week two of our fossils class. We had a nice discussion about bugs coming in. So we're gonna be starting off, or sorry, agenda for the day. Okay, we're not going to be doing a quiz at live because I realized you needed a teacher account for that. We're actually going to be doing quizzes or quizzes. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. We're gonna be doing a Kahoot at the end and then after the whole lecture thing. So if you did last week's homework, please share with me your document. So if you go to share, which is the button in the top right corner, you should have like a share with people in groups thing pop up. And then when it says add people in groups, add my email right here, which I will send into the chat right now again. Um, so you guys can see. Let me pull it up real quick. I don't know where did my chat go? Okay, there we go. So if you did the homework and you want me to look over it and I'll email you the template for whichever organism you did after. And there is a Kahoot, everyone, no need to panic. But yeah, so oops. Okay. we're gonna be starting off with a quizies. So it's sort of like Kahoot, except kind of different. So do you guys want to do classic or team? Classic. Can we do gym kit next time? Ooh, what's that? Team. Oh, OK. Wait, OK, it's a split right now. So we have, okay, I think more people are saying classic. And also, this is just a heads up. I might not hear you guys right away because my earbuds are dying, I think, or it might just be my ears. But okay, I think we have more votes for classic. Or no, I don't know now. Okay, how about this? When I count to three, I want people to unmute and say either classic or team and which one I hear the more of will go with which one. So classic. Team. 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 original teachings you know the good old classic versions are you just all so I, willing I to absolutely before. just i did the classic everything. one before like how you heard them hey i feel as though we should do classic yes <laughs> that's it okay just just because of this, i'm doing, doing personally team. attacked here how dare you we're doing team what Ex what okay Okay. Are, the questions, are the questions are as difficult as last time? I made the questions a lot easier in both the Kahoo and the Quizzies. So Wait, uh, be able to can you send us the link? Yeah. Let me copy paste. Um, do, did you give us a link? Because... Yeah. If you did, well, Wait, it's here. all top it's of in the chat. Thanks. Yeah, just copy paste that into the URL link and then enter this join code. And then when we get around 30 people, we can start. And also, next time, according to popular demand, we'll do classic. Um, can we wait a bit because my internet is kind of slow. Yeah, sure, don't worry. We'll wait until everyone gets in. I see there's only one monkey this time. I'm disappointed. Where did the monkey gang go? I love how the one monkey's not in the grumpy monkeys. This is very true. And then one monkey is a T-Rex. Hey, 
Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I, I think I forgot, but are there actually vegan sharks out there? Just wondering. Are there actually what out there? Uh, one of the team. He said vegan team sharks. Vegan sharks. Like, are there actual vegan sharks out there? No. Oh. Yeah, I was. Hey, what about the 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 big shark thing? The whale shark. I think it eats like yeah. plankton or something. Okay, let's let's Google this really quick. No, there are not vegan sharks, but there are sharks that eat plants, but they're not vegan as of now. Well, like they aren't vegan, they still eat meat. Yeah. So we're waiting on you guys to invent. I don't even, I don't, penguins don't fly. Penguins do you not start it? I don't think anybody else is going to join. Okay, is everyone who's in... Morning Owls? Is that a thing? No. All of them Highly doubt it. Well, where do you get the... Well, Harry Potter? <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna start it now. <laughs> Wait, is everyone who's in... Like, do you guys wanna... Or, like, did everyone who wants to join, join? Okay, well, there are I... no... Yeah. If okay. I was in, yeah, I'm, team, I'm in. That would be a family team because I'm actually cousins with Eli and Mingmei. Very cool. Okay, so there are no objections, so I'm gonna start. Good luck to all teams. Okay, lazy squirrels. Oh, this is moving very fast. Morning owls in the lead. Elephants very close. Morning owls in the lead. Soaring penguin second, elephants third. Squirrel second now. Elephant second again. Penguins second again. Squirrels are now to fourth place. Grumpy monkeys last. Oh no. Morning owls still in the lead, but ooh, penguins catching up. Very exciting. Very interesting. Owls still in the lead. Okay, so as of now, penguins and squirrels are fighting for a second place. Elephant second, dang. Vegan sharks making a comeback, climb up, whatever it's called. I'm trying to narrate this like a kahoot. Morning owls still first, wow. <gasps> squirrels just dethroned morning owls. Oh my gosh, this is so intense. Oh, lazy squirrels coming out on top. Vegan sharks, fourth now, wow. Oh no, penguins. Or, okay, penguins making a comeback. Morning owls, second. Lazy squirrels, first. Let's look at the questions. Uh, my screen is um like dark. I can't do anything. I'm not sure how Pussies works, but I think if you've answered like all of your questions, your screen might go dark. Not one hundred percent sure though, but it should be fine. It looks like lazy squirrels might win. Morning owl dropped to third. T-Rex is making a comeback? Wow. 
Okay, we still have very long ways to go. So far, Erie Elephants has the highest percentage correct, but they haven't answered very many, I think. My game ended already. Wait, William, did you say your game is laggy? No, it ended. Oh. Okay, it looks like... If you Whoever, see... uh, like, someone activated, like, the 50% thingy to help my team. I have no idea what that is. But, okay. I think we're going to wait, like, 10 more seconds. We'll do another and one. And if time permits at the end, we will do another one. I think but... the new motto for my team um, the elephants is just quality over quantity. Yeah, I think elephants kind of stuck there. But okay, We're, I'm gonna end the game now, and then if we have time after the coat, we can play another fossils cuisine. So good job to lazy squirrels for getting first, soaring penguin second, T Rex is third, morning owls fourth, elephants fifth. Monkey 6 and a Vegan Sharks 7. Good job, everyone. Very impressed. Okay. So, so today we're going to be talking about fossil formation. So last week we looked at all the different classifications of fossils. And then so today we're actually going to learn how they form. So there's a lot of different methods and we're going to go through them one by one with visual images to go along with them. So the probably most common type of way that fossils form is through petrification, or I think it's also called permineralization. And it's when minerals slowly replace the tissues of an organism. So this is actually the cross section of probably a tree trunk. And so all of the inside of the trunk has been replaced with minerals. And so you can see the beautiful mineral inside of the tree. And so this would be called petrified wood. So another common method that's probably one of the most common modes of fossilization that you'll see in plants is called carbonization. And this is when the organic materials of an organism are removed except for the carbon, and this leads like a blackish film. So this just means that all of the other chemicals are distilled away, and the only thing that's left is like this imprint. And this is also called coalization because of the correlation between carbon and coal. And as you can see, there's a leaf there that has been carbonized and this would be the remaining fossil. So this is kind of similar to permineralization or, yeah. And this mode of fossilization is called recrystallization or replacement. And this is when the original minerals of an organism can change over time to become more stable minerals. So stable minerals just means that the actual material of the fossil is less radioactive and so less likely to decay, which we'll see later in this presentation when we talk about carbon dating. So as you can see, this is the shell of a cephalopod, which is the class for octopuses and other mollusks. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. So another very common type of fossilization is when the organism is trapped in a substance and unaltered. So common substances are tar and amber. And so a lot of bugs are actually trapped in amber. And those are very common kinds of fossils. And they're usually very well preserved because the soft parts of the animal gets 
encased and preserved from outside damage, which usually doesn't happen with all of the other modes of fossilization. So there's a very famous fossil site, which is also called Lagerstadt, which we'll talk about in week five. And it's called the Brea Tar Pits, I think. And it's in Los Angeles. And it's a bunch of like prehistoric animals preserved in tar. And so like the saber-toothed cat, the woolly mammoth would be like very famous examples of organisms you find really well preserved in the fossil site. Um, yeah, I've heard that um some mammoths they um they got trapped in ice because they fell into a trap, and then when we found them, like we could even like um see like their flesh and everything. So I'm not sure how accurate that is, but I think that is a really like good. Demonstration. I think it was Siberia. I think it is possible though, because if you're trapped in ice, like the ice also acts like a substance that you can trap the organism in. And that would be really cool if we could actually see the fur of a mammoth that's trapped in ice. So I'll look at that after class and see if it's actually real my lab because if it is that's probably like really cool to look at. So what kind of environments do fossils form in? So they almost always form in sedimentary rocks and this is because the other two main types of rocks or igneous and metamorphic rocks they form under extreme heat and pressure so heat would pertain to igneous Pressure would pertain to metamorphic, and this almost always destroys the organism that you're trying to preserve, whereas sedimentary rocks are just formed from sediments carried by like water or the wind. And so after, so the organism passes away and then decomposes and it's covered in sediments in this process. And after being subject, subjected to pressure, the organism becomes a fossil and rock through the processes that we did talk about. And so also because of the soft organisms like worms, which we talked about way at the beginning of class, half the class likes worms, the other half does not like worms, but either way, worms don't get fossilized because they decompose too fast. There's a trick oh, on there. Uh, uh, question, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but shouldn't that two in they decompose too fast have two O's? Yes, you are very correct. This is a typo, which I will fix right after class. I teach fossils, not English, guys, but remember two has two O's or two. It depends on the usage, but yeah, the two here should have two O's. So you can also, have one O, you can have two O's, or you can have a W. This is very true. You should teach an English class. I would go to it. So also because they fossils almost always form in sedimentary rocks, the most common environment that they form in is water because water carries the sediments and it also gives the fossil an environment where it's protected from any disturbance. So this is also why fossils usually form at the bottom of the ocean when waves don't crash into it and mess around with its decomposition in any way. So we're going to be looking at some specific materials that fossils decompose in. Wait. <coughs> Sorry, I just realized. Yeah. So. Okay. So the actual material on the left is amber, and amber is hardened tree resin a lot, although a lot of people think it's sap, it's actually not. It's very old, and it preserves a lot of soft parts, not usually preserved, because it traps the organisms. And then copal would be the softer version of amber. And it's the intermediate 
between the actual resin of the tree and amber because it's not that hard and it's also younger. So if you find a really, really old fossil with like an insect from millions of years ago, that's gonna be from amber and not copal. But another Wait, way to tell it, yeah. Can a woolly mammoth get stuck in amber and then fossil? I don't think there's enough amber to st- uh, stick a woolly mammoth. Yeah, so usually these insects get trapped because they're like on the tree and then they, the resin like falls on them and they trap it. But I don't think that's very likely for a woolly mammoth unless you have like a giant tree. And I don't think that trees are that big. But who knows? Maybe one day yeah, in the future. Yeah, because the insects start like walking on the tree. Um, to them, like think of it this way, right? Um, yeah, if you scale up to uh, like elephants, it'd be like a uh, highway, walking on a highway, and there's no uh, trees as big as a highway. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, another way you can also tell apart. Oops, I keep clicking. Okay, another way you can tell apart amber and copal is if you rub, if you get a chance to like actually see copal and you rub it on the heel of your hand, it should produce a very like tree like smell. But for amber, you need to put it through a really special test to actually get that smell. So that's another way you can tell it apart. So how do you tell again? So, wait, are you asking how to tell them apart? Yeah, I forgot. Okay, so how you tell amber and copal apart. So amber is a lot older than copal. It's also a lot harder. It's less gummy-like. And so if you rub copal on the back or the heel of your hand, it should produce a really, like, sappy tree nature smell but you have to put amber through a special test to actually get the same smell so copal should just be a lot softer and easier to work with Um, yeah so now we're moving on to the sedimentary rocks which are gonna be the environments that you find a lot of shells in, and most of these are marine. So actual coquina. So coquina is a sedimentary rock, and it's almost composed entirely of the shells of marine organisms, like mollusks and clams, etc. And as you can see on the left there, it's really made out of bits and fragments, and that's coquina, and that's how to identify it. So limestone is more general. It's also a sedimentary rock and it's mostly made out of the minerals calcite and aragonite, which are also minerals found in shells. And so these are different forms of calcium carbonate, which is also known as CaCO3. And so It's often composed of skeletal fragments of marine organisms, but it's not completely made out of it, like coquina is. And chalk is also a type of limestone, if you did not know that. Okay, did I skip something? No, I didn't. Okay, cool. So another sedimentary rock is sandstone. And as you can probably infer from the name, It's made out of sand-sized minerals or rock fragments, and so this includes like really, really small particles, and it's usually made out of quartz or feldspar because they are the minerals that are most resistant to the weathering processes of the earth. So as you guys probably know, water cuts down on minerals sometimes, and quartz and feldspar would be most resistant. And then shale is also another type of sedimentary rock. It's made out of mud, which is, it's made out of a mud that is a mixture of clay minerals and tiny fragments of other minerals like quartz, which we talked about in sandstone and calcite, which we talked about in limestone. And it's also characterized by breaks along thin lines. Oops. So as you can see in the photo, it's like made, it's like pretty, fragmented. You have different layers that you can see in different breaks. And so if you see shale, that would 
be what you immediately notice. Shale also has a really distinctive gray color, grayish, brownish color. And so our last sedimentary rock we're gonna look at is chert. And so chert is just made out of very, very, very small quartz crystals. So it has like a shiny luminescent effect as you can see in the photo over there. So now we're gonna go on to fossil dating. So fossil dating is basically just figure out, figuring out how old a fossil is and where it comes on the geologic time scale. So relative dating is ordering rocks or geologic events with respect to one another. So for example, event A comes after event B, but we don't know how exactly old they are. So there are different methods that we use relative dating. Where event dating. A come um, before event B? I'm just like giving examples, but okay. So like, say there was a said event A and we wanted to like put it before or after event B. So it's not like an actual oh. like, yeah, like A comes before. But if we're looking at terms of the alphabet, then yes, event A would come before event B and that's, and you actually just discovered a way of relative dating. So congratulations. So we also have other different methods of uh, relative dating and we use a few principles. So the principle of superposition says that if the rock, oops, sorry, if layers of rock are undisturbed, then the youngest layer will be near the top and the oldest will be at the bottom. So as you can see in the photo on the left, the oldest layer is on the bottom and the youngest is on the top because the different layers are not out of order or disturbed by something. Another principle is principle of original horizontality horizontal yeah horizontality and so this means that rocks are originally layered horizontally so like parallel to each other horizontally as you can see in the image and any filtering is caused by a geologic event so as you can see in the top right edge or corner of the rock thing the side is tilted and that's going to be because I'm so because of some event. So another principle is principle of cross-cutting relationships. And this says that a cut in a rock caused by another rock is always younger than the rock it cuts. So you're not gonna have a rock that cuts another rock that was there before the rock that it cuts. So as you can see in the image, the rock that goes through all of the other rocks is gonna be the youngest because all of the other rocks were there before it was and then it went in and just cut through it. And so principle of intrusions, I think is what it's supposed to be. Or no, inclusions, sorry. So fragments of a rock in another rock are always older than the rock it's in. So it's also the same sort of logic as cross-cutting relationships. You're not going to have a piece of a rock in another rock if the other rock didn't exist before. As you can see, the green rocks in the yellow means that the yellow was there before the green could go into it. So those are the methods of relative dating that a lot of paleontologists use to also date fossils and see what it's like. So what is absolute dating? So unlike relative dating, which only tells us about the order of events, absolute dating can tell us if event A came before event B, but it can also tell you how how many years earlier did event A actually occur before event B and give us the actual ages, which is really cool. So absolute dating is usually carried out through something called radiometric dating, but other names include like radioactive dating. And this is when we use chemical elements to figure out how old a substance, a rock or an event actually is. So different chemical elements, which are sub chemical elements are elements with different numbers of protons. And so they exist in different isotopes, which means that they have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. 
And so the most stable isotope would be the element with this number of neutrons that exist the most in our universe. But there are also different forms of an element with different numbers of neutrons, isotopes. And so those isotopes are radioactive because they're not stable. So they need to undergo some sort of decay to become stable. So this means that they have to get rid of things, other things like protons, neutrons, electrons, positrons, et cetera, to become actually stable. And so different isotopes actually decay at constant rates. And this constant rate that we use in absolute dating is called a half-life. And it's the amount of time it takes for half of an isotope's atoms to decay. So a really famous isotope that we use for absolute dating is carbon-14. And so carbon-14 decays to nitrogen-14, and it's usable because the amount of the stable isotope of carbon, carbon-12, because the ratio of that isotope to carbon-14 in an organism's body generally stays the same as they are alive, because as we breathe in and breathe out carbon dioxide, it's constantly exchanged. So after they die, they can't perform respiration anymore. So then the carbon-14 undergoes decay. And so carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. So it's only accurate to about 10 half-lives. So if something is older than 60,000 years old, it's generally not accurate. Also, I don't have the chat up, so if like you guys want to say something, feel free to. Oh, unmute. we're talking about human fossils here. Oh no! What did I miss? You missed like uh, peat bogs, mummies, and some frozen primitive human on a mountain. That's what yeah. I said. Oh, oh geez. Okay, how do I get the chat? I'm very concerned now. Okay, I got the chat. Let us continue. Don't worry, we aren't like going too wild but... yeah we're not like spamming it or anything uh, okay. that's not the kind of wild i was talking about but yes we're not spamming okay well the first person to unmute can be my chart chat guardian so i'm just not gonna pay attention into the chat but yeah okay i tried to chat you but then i looked at it so yeah Oh no, okay. I should probably get the chat up, but I don't know why you can't see it. Because I can see it if I'm like not in the presenting mode. No, where did it go? This is so sad. Um hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try closing the chat and reopening it and see if I can see it. No, I can't, okay. So I'm gonna stay in this mode then, unless someone has objections so I can see the chat. Wait, I can't even see the chat now, oh no. Okay, I'm just gonna go on presenting and if anyone has a question, like don't hesitate to unmute at all. I'm really sorry, I don't know where the chat went. So moving on, the half-life of potassium-40 is about 1.25 billion years. Potassium-40 is also another isotope that we use a lot of, uranium-238, 4.5 billion years. Samarium, I think that's what it's called, 147, another isotope whose half-life is 106 billion years. So quick geologic time overview, I'm not going to go through each of each one of these, because we're going to look at them later, but this is just so you guys can not be completely confused when I go to the next part. While you guys look at this in the meantime, I'm going to try to get the chat. Why is the Cambrian period and Ordovician period the same? Description. So, they're both part of the age of the invertebrates. So age is like a pretty informal way of classifying time. So this is 
means that during both of those periods, a lot of invertebrates were evolving. So like Silurian and Devonian were also both age of the fishes. The entire Mesozoic era is called the age of the reptiles because that's the time that dinosaurs started to evolve. And then the entire Cenozoic era is called age of the mammals. Wait, what's an epoch? So an epoch is a further splitting down classification of time. So it goes from eon to era to period and then epoch. So an epoch is just like a smaller unit of time within a period. And there's like centuries and decades of years. Yeah, 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 exactly. Wait, isn't there like also a millennia? I think that goes like even like more specific. I think that Wait, did you ask millennia? Yeah. Okay, so I think millennia, it's less of like classifying a period of geologic time as to like saying like one million years. So all of these are classified based on like, like, okay, so the end of the Mesozoic era is marked by a mass extinction the Cretaceous extinction when all of the dinosaurs went extinct, there's not necessarily like a set time, like number of years. It's just when did Earth undergo the most change? Whereas like century, a decade, like it's all a set number of years. So it's like two completely different ways of classifying time. One is with respect to geology and what's happening in the Earth. And the other one is respect to like time itself. That makes sense. I don't know. Okay. Well, moving on. I still can't see the chat, so I'm very sad. But I oh, I'm just I'm just talking about um uh, back in the, the he, back he, in, no, he's talking back about the day. Hand steaks, scrambled spiders, stewed dragonfly, ro roasted wasp, and pickled maggots. You know, back in the day when there were massive bugs, I kind of want to eat those. I feel very fortunate that I cannot see the chat right now. <laughs> but I feel very bad for all of the other people who have to see the chat. So, yeah, if you guys, okay, I don't even know why I can't see the chat. But yeah, just make sure nothing insane is happening. And if you have a question, unmute. Or, yeah, you can email me if you don't want to unmute and I'll respond like right after class or stay behind after class. Okay, so index fossils. So they're also called type fossils or key fossils. And so they are fossils that fit a very specific set of criteria. So they have to have lived for a short amount of time. So like usually it's, they evolve at the beginning of a period and go extinct at the end. They also have to have a widespread distribution. So you have to be able to find it like all over the world. So if you found one of these, if you found one of the, one of these fossils in North America, but like also in Africa, like it makes it easier to identify and make correlations. And so it also becomes more useful if the fossil is common, so you like repeatedly see it and associate it with a certain time period. And so this is why dinosaurs are not index fossils, because they're really rare. And so they also have to be distinctive and unique, so you have to like be really like keen about identifying it. You have to know it like as soon as you see it. And so all of these can be fit into something that people call a boom and bust characteristics. And so that means it's abundant. There's a lot of it, it's short-lived, lived for a short amount of time and vulnerable to change and extinction. So this means that after that short amount of time, it goes extinct because it can like live in certain environments. And so index fossils are actually very useful in relative dating because we know, so if we see an index fossil and it's an index fossil for, let's say, the Cambrian period, then if we see one of those fossils, we know that this rock dates back to the Cambrian. 
And it's usually the species taxonomic level, so the most specific kind of classification, but the ones I'm going to show you are mostly genus level, which is one level above species. So, famous index fossils. The name of this fossil is the Cryptolithus, which is also, which its etymology is also lace collar trilobite. So trilobites are actually the ancestors of beetles, which is why they look very weird like that. And so it's an arthropod and- That looks more like a shell than like an actual bug. Yeah, so arthropods, so all arthropod, arthropods are actually known for shedding their exoskeleton. So an exoskeleton is like the mold of a bug. So it's these exoskeletons that harden over time. So it does look like a shell because it's not going to be like a soft part. Oh so yes, very good observation. And so the cryptolithus is a index fossil for the Ordovician period, and its distribution is worldwide. And so it's usually preserved in marine sediments, and their lace collars is going to be the key in identifying a cryptolithus. But what's a arthropod? So an arthropod is the phylum for insects. So it's a phylum level, and it's basically anything that has jointed appendages. They shed their exoskeleton. There's a few other like characteristics of arthropods, but it's basically anything that looks like a bug. So like bugs, scorpions. Uh, yeah, it's basically anything that looks like a bug. Well, no, not anything that looks like a bug, but most of the arthropods look like bugs, and bugs are arthropods. It's basically one level above the insect, the phylum. So, our second famous index fossil, it's a mucrospherifer, and you guys saw this on last week's Kahoot. The common name is a butterfly shell, and it's a brachiopod. So brachiopods are kind of like clams, except they're a separate phylum, because so clams are usually left-right oriented, I believe. The brachiopods are bottom, top. <coughs> Sorry, okay, so the time period that the mucrospherifer is an index fossil for is the Middle Devonian. Distribution is again worldwide, except for Antarctica and Australia. And they're also preserved in marine sediments and their main preservation is their shell. So another famous index fossil is the Dactyliosteris. They don't have a common name and they are a cephalopod, which is a class of animals. And it's the same class that you would find like octopuses and squids in. So this would be their shell, but outside of their shell, they would look exactly like a octopus. So the time period that they are an index fossil for would be the early Jurassic. Their distribution is again worldwide and they're mostly found in England and Germany though. Their preservation is also again marine sediments and their dead shells can actually sometimes wash onto shore. So that would be a key place to find their shells. So finally, I'm sure you guys have all seen the Shell Gasoline logo. And so this would be the actual organism for the Shell logo. And it's called a pectin gibbous. This is a species. Its common name is a calico scallop and its animal, the animal, what it actually is, is a scallop. The time period it's an index fossil for, for is the quaternary period, which is when it lived. Um, it's also not extinct, the only index fossil on this list that's actually still alive today. Distribution is worldwide, and their preservation is, again, marine sediments and their shells. So now we shall go on to the Kahoot. I also still cannot see the chat, so I'm very concerned as to what's happening. Oh, uh, don't right worry. Uh, the sage official turned it off. Okay. 
not you missed a lot of things it was a real uh show you should have busted out the popcorn and soda okay so was that it was like it took me like three tries to uh spell quiet i'm I'm ashamed of myself okay so this is very concerning but all right let's play fossils week two All right, let's go, guys. Wait, let's do indie pop music. I can't even hear anything for some reason. Wait, can you guys hear the music or not? No, we cannot. No, because at least I can. Probably did share with sound. Yeah, that makes sense. Think that you should share the sound. I am uh, very unsure how to share the sound. Because you have to view options, I think. You can press share sound. Oh, can you share sound. Can you guys hear now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so there we go. That's, that's, uh, yeah, we can hear it now. Okay, I finally see the chat. What did he say? What type of music is this? This is Kahoot by Indie Pop. So let me turn the music down a little. No, I like it. We have some people that say that they can't hear me talking, so... Yeah, don't crank it up. Well, I can finally see the chat. This is... Very interesting to read. Okay. Um... Let's wait like one more minute. Wait, oh no, I can't see the chat. Oh no, someone just broke their table leg. Hello, Athena. I'm just responding to the direct message. Oh boy, we've got political names now. Hey, I'm going to ask you guys from refraining to bring politics into this, so I'm sorry Trump is Grump, I'm going to have to remove you. So yeah, I don't mind like weird names, just nothing uh, controversial. Please. I'm gonna wait one more minute and then start, or until just everyone Okay, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let the games begin. Fossils week two. I believe in you guys. I trust. Okay, nice. Okay, so as you can see, the insect fossil thing was pretty flat, so it was an imprint. So anytime you see an imprint, just automatically think carbon or coal. But not bad, not bad. I forgot what recrystallization was. 
So recrystallization is basically mis more stable minerals replacing the more unstable minerals of an organism. So I think, yeah. So after the, an organism has been petrified, I think it's actually possible for it to be recrystallized as well. So question two. Proud, proud, very proud. I'm a proud mom right now. Okay, monkey in third. True or false? Nice, nice. So, fossils are almost always found in sedimentary rocks because metamorphic rocks, the actual process of making metamorphic rocks, can be very damaging to an organism. So, what is the following substance? If you put but amber, then everyone would have been confused. I know, if there's amber, I would have been confused. Yeah, I'm not that evil, I think. You guys gave you me. You think. You think. You guys yeah, are giving well. me very good ideas for next week's cooking. Oh, no. <laughs> I hope you realize that. Well, uh... What principle is used for relative dating? Or what principle for relative dating is used for the image? Now I have to number one. Oh, no. This is very sad. Can we all get... Moment of silence for William. Ooh, okay. Oh, but somehow I still maintain my place. Okay, so the principle of para parallel layering is actually not a, an actual thing. So it's good that you guys recognize that the other two were different things, but the principle of parallel layering is not. An actual thing. So, question six What is the most common ice? Is it uranium 48, hydrogen 12, nitrogen 14? Okay, nice. Good job, guys. Very proud. The other are not actual isotopes used for used for radiometric dating. Which of the following is not a characteristic of an index fossil? Nice, good job, guys. So, need to remember that the more common and widespread a fossil is, the better it is for being an index fossil. Okay, so once I select, are you ready for next class? We're starting to travel through geologic time. The pre Cambrian and I'm waiting to see how many people pick yellow. Okay, <laughs> I should not have made this multi select, but six people have made me very sad today. So, podium time. Wow, seven out of eight. Going penguin, seven out of eight. Oh, wow, we have a lot of seven out of eight. Good job, guys. Very proud, very proud. Lucky number four, but it's okay. I 